innovation. It's the great equalizer. It not only gives the underdog a chance, but often it gives them an advantage. But we use the term so often that it's become a buzzword. It seems like the more people say it, the less they actually do it. I spent 25 years helping take a business from a small startup into a global technology company through the power of innovation. We disrupted industries and we started an LED lighting revolution that changed the way people think about light. But for me, it almost never happened. Because in 1991, when Cree offered me a job, I turned them down. I thought it was too risky. I realized I was afraid of failure. It wasn't until a couple of years later, when Cree called again, that I said yes. And I embarked on a journey where I discovered how to think differently, where I learned what it takes to pursue the impossible. Now, it might surprise you, but despite all of our success, we never talked about innovation. We just did it. We believed that it was about people more than process, and we really wanted to focus on their mindset and not their tool set. Now, don't get me wrong. Tools can have value, but you first have to get your mind in the right place. You have to uncover your innovator spirit. The innovator spirit is the beliefs that enable the behaviors that make innovation possible. And yet for many of us, the challenge we face is that our life experiences have created beliefs that actually get in the way of innovation. We've learned to avoid risk instead of taking risk. We've learned to settle for best practice when what we should be doing is striving for something better. And we've learned to view a crisis only as a problem, when in reality, it's also an incredible opportunity. So if we're going to innovate, what we need to do is reset these default beliefs. But before I talk about how to do that, I think it's important to answer one question. What is innovation? Well, to me, innovation is something that's new, but that also solves a customer problem and creates value. Now, most of us spend all of our energy focused on new, when in reality, that's relatively easy. It's solving a problem and creating value, that's the hard part. And so if you're gonna be good at that, what you have to do is you have to put yourself in situations that create experiences that allow you to form these new beliefs. So what I wanna do today is offer six traits that you can work on to help you uncover your innovator spirit. I call these traits the circle of innovation. The first trait is candor. Look, if you're not willing to face the difficult facts, you're never gonna get at the problem that really needs to be solved. You have to challenge one another and be held accountable. If you wanna innovate, you wanna embrace the brutal truth. You know, my first experience with this happened when I joined Cree and I was sitting in the management meeting and I sit at the table and my boss starts the meeting out by handing out a piece of paper to all of us. And he says, I want you to read this before we get started. And so as I turn, take the piece of paper and I turn it over, I realize it's a copy of an email that I had written to a customer just earlier that week. And he had circled a grammatical error I'd made in the first sentence. Now, as I'm sitting there looking at that, thinking about my peers, I'm embarrassed, a little bit frustrated, and even started to get a bit angry until I realized he was simply demonstrating the brutal truth. It was up to me to take that feedback and get better because getting better is what innovation is really all about. So here's something I'd like you to try. The next time you're sitting in a meeting and someone says something that you disagree with that just doesn't make sense, don't just sit there, call them out. Say, that's a lousy idea. Now, you might get some pushback that this is gonna make people uncomfortable, and it might. But if they're not willing to face the facts, they're not gonna be very helpful to you in the pursuit of innovation. Now, I offer this advice with one caveat. If you wanna be able to give someone the brutal truth, you also have to be willing to take it. The second trait is initiative. And so many people spent all of their time waiting for perfect information before making a decision. 
when in reality, there is no such thing. They're so worried about trying to be right that they actually miss the opportunities for success. So if you're going to innovate, don't wait for perfection. You know, when we were developing products at Cree, you really couldn't know what the customer wanted. So instead, we'd take our best idea and we'd put it in the marketplace and see what happened. And basically, we'd be running an experiment. And from this, we would gain knowledge and insight that we otherwise never could have known. So here's what I'd like you to do. Think of an idea that you've been waiting to perfect. And then I want you to stop waiting. I want you to put it out there. And what you're going to learn is that it's better to take what you know and learn from it than it is to wait. Because when it comes to innovation, being directionally correct is more than good enough. The third trait is resolve. Look, innovation is hard. And it's going to be very tempting to want to give up when things don't go as planned. And I can assure you that if you're pursuing innovation, things are not going to go as planned. And in most companies, what we do is we spend so much of our time and energy focused on developing backup plans and contingencies. But when it comes to innovation, they actually have negative value. What you want to do instead is create a situation where you make success the only option. One of the things I learned to do over my career was when the team would be facing a difficult problem and just seemed like they were getting stuck, I'd reset the context. I'd ask them, Step back. I want to know what you would do in this situation if you knew you had to come up with a solution or the company was going to go out of business. We were all going to lose our jobs. And by resetting that context, it created a focus that allowed us to overcome barriers that had previously seemed insurmountable. So let me ask you, what's your backup plan? And then I want you to try something whether it's tomorrow or next week, I want you to abandon it. And I think what you'll find is that it actually gives you the best chance at success. And although you may not get to your ultimate goal, I guarantee you, you'll accomplish far more than otherwise would have been possible. The fourth trait is courage. And as you heard from my own story, the fear of failure can often get in the way of us taking the necessary risks. But the fact is, there is no innovation without risk. And although I think we all know that resiliency is critical to success, you can't give it to someone. And in fact, they can't get it by simply reading about it or talking about it. You have to learn to become unafraid of failure. Let me give you a personal example. This might come as a surprise to you all, but I am not much of a dancer. So a few years ago, before my daughter's wedding, she came to me and said, Dad, I'd like you to take a ballroom dancing lesson with me. Now, I have to tell you, this was way outside my comfort zone. But I felt like I had to say yes. And so I went, and I survived the experience, and maybe even became a little bit more confident that day. But what was amazing is that on the night of her wedding, when it was time for that father-daughter dance, I was actually able to go out and enjoy the experience. So here's what I'd like you to think about. I want you to work on getting comfortable with failure. I want you to go to your boss, and I want you to sign up for a goal that you have no chance at achieving. And then I want you to go for it. And I think what you're going to find is that although you still won't get there, there wasn't that much to be afraid of in the first place. Because when it comes to innovation, the biggest risk is actually doing nothing at all. The fifth trait is leadership. Look, the future doesn't just happen. Somebody has to go out and make it happen. Somebody has to lead. And despite our best intentions, many of us as leaders often limit ourselves. Take, for example, this idea that we're going to think outside the box. Seems like a great idea, but it's a trap. Because the moment you accept that there is a box, you're actually accepting boundary conditions that will limit what's possible. If you're going to innovate, what you need to understand is that boundary conditions are a choice. And you want to understand that there is no box. You know, 
When I was getting ready to leave my job at Hewlett Packard to join this small startup in North Carolina, I was packing up my things. And one of the scientists came by my desk and he said, you know, what they're doing at Cree will never work. It's impossible. The physics of the material system they're working on can simply never make a good blue LED. Well, the scientists at Cree ignored the experts. And eventually, they proved them wrong. But not only that, they went on to develop an LED that transformed the entire lighting industry. So, what's something in your line of work that people think is impossible? I want to encourage you that that's what you should go work on. Because when someone says something can't be done, what they're actually doing is showing you where the best opportunity for innovation actually is. The sixth trait is engagement. Look, as we go on in our careers, and we learn to become supervisors and managers, we learn to delegate. But the challenge is that when it comes to innovation, the key to success often lies in the details. And so if you're not in those details, you can't help your team at the critical moments. Innovation is messy, and you've got to be willing to get your hands dirty. You know, in the early days of LED lighting, I got an opportunity to go to the White House with a small group of CEOs to talk about green technology and jobs. And as I was standing there in the Roosevelt Room that day, waiting for President Obama to join us, I was talking with the Energy Secretary, Stephen Chu. And I said to him, you know, you talk a lot about green technology, but how come you don't have any LED lighting here in the White House? And he turned and he looked at me and he said, Chuck, We'll have LED lighting here in the White House when it pays for itself in my lifetime, not the LED's lifetime. His point that was is that while LED technology was promising, it was still far too expensive to be practical. And he was right. And his comment that day, it became personal. In fact, I wrote it down on a piece of paper on the flight home, and it hung on the wall in my office. And it served as a reminder for years to come for us to push the technology further than anyone thought was possible. So here's what I'd like to ask you. Whether it be in your personal life or your professional life, what's that biggest obstacle to your success? Then write it down. And whether you put it on the wall next to your office or you make it the screensaver on your smartphone, but put it somewhere where it serves as a reminder every day to not just talk about it, not just think about it, but to actually do something about it. Because what I learned over the years is that when things get personal, that's when things get done. When you bring these six ideas together, candor, initiative, resolve, courage, leadership, and engagement, you get the circle of innovation. There is no beginning and there is no end. All of these ideas are connected. Keep in mind there is no finish line. You can always get better. But if you continue to work on them, you can uncover your innovator spirit. You know, it was a little over 27 years ago that I said yes to Cree and started on my own innovation journey. And I want to assure you that if I can find my innovator spirit, so can you. Just keep in mind that innovation is the great equalizer. It is an opportunity for you to change your world. And with a little bit of luck, you just might change the world. Thank you.